Hey guys, hoping all is well with everyone. So in this video, we're going to be continuing our read-along of the Secret Zoo Traps and Specters. And the last time we finished off, we completed chapter 33. And kind of as a quick recap, we kind of left on quite a cliffhanger last time um, between what had happened to Tank and what had happened to Richie. So Tank had gone behind this kind of mysterious velvet curtain in um, kind of part of the uh, Clarksville portals. And he ended up in this area part of where that deep fog was coming from and he had gone um, behind that magic velvet curtain and he went down a very slippery steep slope and then kind of just vanished from the scene and at the same time in the next chapter the shadowy figure that had uh, that Richie was following was indeed de Graff that was kind of evidenced um, and concluded by Ella who was trying to catch up to Richie so when this had happened and uh, DeGraff had spotted Richie, all of a sudden Richie had like, was it was screaming in a very fearful way that parts of him were like disappearing, almost like disintegrating and just vanishing. So we're going to continue on today with chapter 34 and kind of pick up where we left off with those two scenarios. Chapter 34, The Missing Pieces. Terrified. Richie had no clue what was happening. The man in the trench coat, de Graff, had turned around, his face concealed between his collar and his hat brim, and spotted him. Then he charged, his gloved hands reaching out. But as he closed in on Richie, de Graff's body was jolted to one side, and Richie simultaneously felt something strike his arms and chest. He looked down to see pieces of himself gone. Now, Richie glanced over at his left arm. Though there was no blood or pain, he could see clear through the ground. Gone were parts of his elbow, forearm, and all of his wrist. Had DeGraff spilled his wicked magic onto Richie's body? His gaze jumped up to DeGraff. The man was off to one side of the road, staggering about and throwing wild punches into the air. But nothing was near him. Richie groped at the missing piece of his wrist and then touched something that wasn't part of his body. Some thing that began to squirm. As he jerked his hand away, a visible piece of his forearm disappeared. It's as if it was something poisonous thing was moving along his arm, devouring his flesh. He grabbed the squirming thing, and it almost immediately appeared in his hand. A chameleon. Its buggy eyes were locked on Richie and colors were swirling along its body as it tried to adjust to the new hues in Richie's palm. Within seconds, Richie's hand vanished in its perfect camouflage. Richie suddenly realized what was happening. A specter had attacked the Shadowist, and chameleons had fallen off her and landed on Richie. As the chameleon climbed from his palm to his arm, Richie looked up at DeGraff, who was still struggling with the specter, his long trench coat flapping against his boots. It's him! Richie said into his bone mic. When no one responded, he realized his earpiece had fallen out. He spotted it on the ground, scooped it up, and plugged it back into its proper place. Can you guys hear me? Richie! Someone said. It sounded like Noah. Guys! I... Before Richie would, could say more, someone ran out from out of the fog. Wonder Woman! Ella! Your arm! Ella said. Chameleons! Richie exclaimed. From a specter! Just then, one of DeGraff's punches connected with the specter, knocking a few chameleons into the air and revealing part of the girl. Blonde hair spiked in a mohawk, bright blue eyes buried in dark makeup, smooth pale skin. Sarah. The blow knocked Sarah to the street. The commands that had fallen from her body scurried back onto her. DeGraff turned and ran. He's getting away! Ella reported into her microphone. Down Old Cove, toward Jenkins Street! Roger, Sam said. Everyone hear that? Converge on Jenkins Street and head him off before he can reach the zoo. Let's use this fog to our advantage. Ella turned to Richie. You okay? Richie nodded. Sarah, Ella said, swinging her gaze around. Right here, Sarah said, her voice rising directly from Richie's left. I'm good. 
Come on, Ella said. Let's go. Ella took off running. Richie followed. And as he brushed past Sarah, the field chameleons on his body jumped back onto her. Ella cast a glance over her shoulder. Hurry, Richie! We can't lose him! Richie nodded and picked up speed. He never agreed with someone more in his life. Chapter 35 Tank's Discovery Tank slid down the steep cavern floor, his fingers slicing through the mud as he tried to grab onto something. Mud streamed up his pant legs, and his flashlight bounced around, streaking light across the walls. When he came to a stop, a giant centipede crawled onto his neck, its body rubbing against his skin. He jumped to his feet and tossed the disgusting thing aside. Then he scanned his new position. The cave had leveled out. Less than five feet in front of him, it opened to a new area where nothing but fog and darkness awaited. He inched forward, the mud sloshing around his feet. He reached the mouth of the cave and stepped out. Then he swung the beam of his light along the wall near him and couldn't believe what he saw. Chapter 36 De Graf Pulls Away Ella and Richie raced up Old Cove toward Jenkins Street. Ahead of them, De Graf's black boots stomped the pavement and his trench coat waved like a cape. A woman pushing a toddler in a stroller suddenly appeared from the fog. She was dressed as a cat, her child a mouse. Startled by DeGraff, she yanked her stroller to the side of the road and yelled, Slow down! Without much kindness. The scouts dodged left to avoid a kid dressed as Harry Potter, then rounded a curve in the road. Ella glanced over at Richie. Below his checkered flood pants, Ella saw at least six inches of stark white socks. Most of his shirt was buried in his pants, and the things in his pocket protector occasionally jumped out, leaving a, trailer, a trail of office supplies on the street. DeGraff, faster than the scouts, began to pull away. We're losing him, Ella said into her bone mic. He's too fast. As they rounded a sharp turn in the road, DeGraff was gone, lost in the fog. Ella and Richie stopped. They didn't know if he'd continued down the street or charged into the surrounding lawns. He got away, Ella said, Sam's voice. You sure? Yeah. She braced her hands on her knees and swallowed a few deep breaths to cool, to cool the burn in her lungs. <sighs> He's gone! After a few seconds of silence, Sam's voice rose again into Ella's ears. Descenders, find him. Do whatever it takes. Chapter 37. Hannah Runs the Roof Hannah turned off the street she was on and ran alongside a house. There were no trick-or-treaters in sight, and all the nearby porch lights were out. The darkness was as thick as the fog. She needed a better view, and she knew how to get it. Still running, she jumped and tugged the pool loops on her boots. Her rubbery soles bulged to ten inches thick. She shot upward, high above the houses, and landed on a gabled roof. Without breaking her stride, she hunched low to keep from being seen and ran across the shingles. At the end of the roof, she sailed easily across the distance to the next house, where she landed with a soft thud. She looked right, then left. Through the fog, she detected the faint outlines of a few costume-clad kids. About ten rooftops in front of her, the row of houses stopped at Jenkins, the primary road through the subdivision, the one that wrapped around the Clarksville Zoo. On the other side of Jenkins were more houses, and beyond their backyards was the long concrete wall of the zoo. Hannah sprang through the air again. If DeGraff was headed for the Clarksville Zoo, he would eventually have to cross Jenkins Street. And Hannah hoped to be there, waiting for him. And I'll stop the video there, ending chapter 37. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's kind of an interesting turn of events as um, the chameleons were kind of hovering and covering uh, Richie's body and creating his own intense fear. Um... But I hope you guys, as always, enjoyed this video, and please, as always, take good care of yourselves and be safe, and I look forward to seeing you in our continuation of The Secret Zoo, um, and uh, we will hope to see you very uh, soon, and as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Bye.